Hi everybody, we are back. And I can hear everybody saying, why so soon, Nelson? It's It hasn't been four months yet. This is actually one of the reasons why uh, the last update took a little bit of time. This is Caramel Combat. And it was quite a departure for me and King's Isle referenced some very traditional source material to emulate. And I, I did say to him, I was like, hmm, our, yeah, that's what we're doing. And they're like, yep. Go to it, and I'm glad it worked out. It was a lot of fun to write. I love stepping out of, outside of my comfort zone and getting to write in other genres. It's it's a really neat uh, to to study composition from kind of different perspectives and see you know what's important in this style of music and what techniques you use from there and what harmony and you know rhythmic motifs you can borrow from uh, different source material. So I think I'll break with tradition and just get right to it. So I submit for your consideration one caramel combat. So let's address the elephant in the room here. We have lots of sounds going on. Um, so I have kind of the more traditional Bavarian Oompa band, and I put um, most of those instruments in this instance of contact. Uh, some of the things that I didn't really want um, too deep in a, in the reverb, I wanted to keep it a little, a little drier there. I have a lot of the winds and strings in here, uh, clarinets, the recorders, um, you know, some of the, uh, the woodwind stuff. Uh, I have a lot of percussion stuff in here because there's a lot of uh, auxiliary percussion. So um, cymbals, uh, various percussion. Got claves, you know, sleigh bells, um, quicas, I think those are called, guiros. There's a ratchet sound. This is from the Sinus Perk Library. A little on the comedic side, a little, you know, stuff that was borrowed for like circus music and stuff and all these effects. There's a uh, mallet percussion with the xylophone here. Uh, a lot of the oompa stuff, you know, you got a very big uh, bass drum, uh, concert bass drum there. This is from one of my older libraries. It just happened to be kind of the right, the right sound for it. I wanted a really puffy bass drum because it's, you know, boom, cha, cha, boom, cha, cha. I was looking for something very particular with that. So uh, I remember I did go through a, a ton of bass drums looking for you know just the right one um more tambourines uh i'm going to talk about this one in a second uh and then some some timpanis from also from cine samples uh then i also have um this library in this case i used it for the accordion 
uh, sound there. I don't have a lot of other accordion libraries. And you can see that, yes, indeed, I did uh, flex the golden pipes again on this one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll tell you about it. So the the one the part about this music that's very challenging is that it's pretty melodically dense. There's a lot of notes going on, <laughs> too many notes, my lord. And there's a lot of instruments kind of doing it to make it sound convincing. All right, so right off the top, we have a uh, violin staccato here. And there's, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of chromatic passing tones in there. And we're really, you know, going a long distance to climb this mountain, you know, to come back into the main uh, theme, which kind of gets established right here. Um, and as is my usual habit, I have stacks and stacks and stacks of strings here to try and uh, make it realistic. and cellos down here too. So let's uh let's check out what the clarinets are doing here off the top. See right there they're doubling that those things. And it's kind of moving uh contrary here to the violin. The violin's moving down. It's a lot of chaos, and I sort of wanted it to be like that, just a bunch of happy revelers, you know, dancing around the hall. Uh, and then the accordion is such a, you know, unique instrument. Uh, it can do the lead and the uh, accompaniment. So let's play in this lead line, but also the, and then mash in the, you know, kind of bass notes in there with the low strings. That part there is kind of the, the, the fun I'm talking about. I, I don't know that much about the accordion, you know, just sort of the basic mechanics of it. But um, these are the things that go through my mind. You know, I'm trying to keep it real. So I'm trying to think of what I would be thinking if there was, you know, I'm playing in an accordion. So the little, this little, last little bit on the accordion, the right there, there's the notes that I played. So that's, was you know, that's not a scale I'm doing. It's just sort of like a, you know, run your fingers up the keyboard there. Right, so those idiosyncratic things are always really fun to to hear. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. The accordion here is going from the melody to uh, the accompaniment, right? Hitting this these umpas, it's really jumped back and forth to different musical roles really quickly. And I think I did that with a lot of the orchestration in here, and kind of just realizing now that it might be taking some of the character of the accordion uh, style and applying it to other instruments. You know, in my mind as I was going through this, I'm picturing you know them the dancers doing like you know specific step and you know addressing this way and turning that way and all of those things kind of help inform uh the way that it writes so so here it's like it's very measured right it's like i specifically remember first grappling with okay how am i gonna write this music that i've never heard before i listened to a lot of things online and just tried to get a sense of what made that sound like it did and i heard a lot of kind of chromatic passage stuff a lot of you know quick back and forth you know now you guys have the melody now it's passed over here there's a lot of call and response and also a lot of like this arpeggiation i mean this is all just outlining the the chord of c right e g c e and all, all of these notes are just you know doing it again changes over to g here and then it goes to f you know, move back, moves back to C. Uh, and then here, this is a lot of, a lot of chromatic. So it's really just going up to the G and then just moving down uh, chromatically. Right. And that's really how I come up with melodies. I mean, a lot of times I'm thinking about the shape of it. It was, it was pretty simple harmony, you know, one, four, five, and very folk approach to that. All right. So the time has come to talk about this. We're playing in a playground, you know, that has certain rules and, you know, how could you do something like this without doing a little yodel hee who really wanted it to echo through the hills as, you know, one Swiss sheep herder calls to another across the Alps. Yodel-a-hee-hoo.
Hey guys, how bad is my yodeling? Comment down below. Uh, but you know, again, all in good fun. A lot of fun parts in there. Um, a- another fun instrument to write for, and I mentioned it before, but it, it it just keeps being true. It's it's so much fun to put little xylophone parts in. Right. It really just the the attack of the xylophone. I mean, nothing has an attack like a xylophone. It is so transient. You know, it's just bam. And also getting to do the little roll and then do 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 I mean, this is this is cartoon school 101 here, right? Again, just a nice little run up, run up the white keys and then, you know, smack the top note. Um, I didn't want to get to kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare. I think it's. You know, tell me when you get bored here. <laughs> I like to shift it up a lot, keep it, you know, moving all the time, especially when you're listening to him, you know, uh, loop over and over again. This part here, this is actually one of the first parts I came up with uh, for this piece. And in, in a lot of ways, it established some of the tonality for the rest of the world. And by itself, it doesn't sound anything like, you know, Bavarian uh, dance hall music. But it, I actually wrote this part, I think, first uh, and then inserted all the other stuff before it so that this part, when we got to it, kind of was a little bit of a br- breath of fresh air. Right? I think it transitions nicely into it. It doesn't sound like a, a gigantic departure. It's at the same tempo and it's got, you know, some of the same some of the same harmony in here. But uh yeah, I did wind up reusing this in some of the other uh, other tunes in the world. Uh, recorder. This is something that's not strictly Bavarian, I guess, but it's it's just got like a nice folky, you know, general European quality to it, uh, which I use often. I'm gonna turn off the yodelayhoos. Man, like the Mandalorian score uses like some, I guess it's a bass uh, recorder, but it just has all of that kind of warmth. I mean, it's a flute, but it's a little woodier and warmer. And so over here, it's kind of, it's doing some stuff with the bassoon and clarinet. And it, it actually it plays really nicely, all of them together there. Uh, this was uh, some some fun writing that I like doing the bassoon and the tuba together. Yeah. Oh yeah, this recorder sound uh, is from a library by Embertone. They have like a lot of wind uh, instruments and a lot of kind of ethnic wind instruments. There's an ocarina, like a bamboo flute, and they they they're so much fun to play. They sound great. The legato. Uh, between the notes is just really really nice so i usually try and feature them all right so this next bit here uses an instrument i could not find uh, a sample library for this instrument i was looking all around for somebody that had a set of these they're called almglocken they're also just you know called cowbells or swiss cowbells or something like that um and they're literally cowbells and you just pick them up and shake them to to play the notes now my parents used to play in a german like oktoberfest band uh, and my mom would actually play these instruments and it's, it's a pain. It's, it's, it's like playing handbells in church, but you know, it's one person doing it by themselves. And so part of the show is that somebody's just going crazy, you know, trying to grab the different bells and ring them at the right time and then put them down without knocking them over. It's a lot of fun to see. So this is in celebration of my mother, uh, who used to play this instrument and it, I couldn't find any of the, any of the, these instruments anywhere. So what I wound up doing is I actually recorded uh, a cowbell that I own, and the only cowbell that I own is this little cowbell that I won as a part of the Iron Composer Competition, uh, 2009, I want to say, at the Austin, Texas Game Developer Conference. You sort of composed to a video game scene that they had uh, in front of you, but you did it live, so you didn't know what the game was going to be, you didn't know what scene it was going to be, and you had to try and like you know create the soundtrack for it with a bunch of samples that you had prepared. So it was crazy. I didn't win, except that, you know, I, I made a lot of friends uh, and it was a lot of fun. But my participation trophy was this little cowbell that says Iron Composer Competition 2009. And so I recorded myself, you know, playing this different lengths of it to see what I could get out of it. I had to pitch shift it. So that's what, that's how I got the other notes. 
Uh, and then I created a uh, sample instrument right here in contact. You can create your own and you drag your own samples in and create your own uh, loop points and stuff like that and mapped it out to the keys. And so now I have a Alm Glocken uh, instrument in Pro Tools. I, so here, here it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solo it uh, against my better judgment. Remember, this is, uh, you know, mixed in with a bunch of other stuff that makes it sound better. All right, so I wanted the idea of really moving those cowbells around. It's sloppy, it doesn't sound great, um, but that's, again, that's part of the charm. And with the rest of the stuff going on on top of it, you know, that, that made it sound a lot better. So now you know what the heck that's all about. Uh, right here, this is uh, this is my favorite part. Uh, these are, of course, all me just screaming, hey. Hey! <laughs> a lot of cheese in there. Now, uh, right up here, this is the tempo ruler, and you'll notice that there's a lot of kind of data points on it right here. This slows down considerably. 155 slows down to 100, so it slows down about 50 BPM, and then immediately jumps up to a faster tempo. This is sometimes hard to pull off in game music just because you know you don't have a lot of time. So if it's constantly shifting uh, speeds, it might sound a little little strange. So I don't do this very often, but so although this is it's untraditional, this is combat music and I wanted it to go uh, back and forth you know a lot and there's a lot more room I think for um, things shifting and grooves and, and tempo shifting. So here it really goes between a different feel. I wanted to shift the feel up and the only way to do that was to kind of create this tempo change. Uh, which had to kind of be prepared for. Like a lot of times it's hard to just go from one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You know, you need to prepare the listener for that so they're not weirded out by it. And I, I actually worked on this a lot to get it just right because it was a very delicate kind of procedure. Hey! And it really kind of slows up and bam kind of gets you in the mood for that the cymbal rolls kind of go into that and there's temps kind of swelling into the next bit <laughs> So if that was by itself, that would sound really piratey. Um, there, the uncha 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 uncha. So I wanted to be really careful with that. Um, so that's why it moves back into kind of a more uh, friendlier vibe uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> So it gets a little more stepwise here and a little less arpeggiated, the, the melody is here. But And then this next section, I knew I wanted a little bit of call and response. I mean, think about like the chicken dance, you know. Right. Again, I'm being horribly reductionist, but it's like, you know, these are the cultural touchstones that you can kind of derive other ideas from. But that actually came out of uh, one of the pieces that was uh, referenced to me. And there's, uh, there's all of the crazy auxiliary percussion. These are all like whistles, train whistles, uh, police whistles, a rough whistle, and that's a, I forget what it's called. I remember being a kid and like, you know, winning some as a, as a prize in some, you know, community fair we went to. Oh, fairs. Fairs were these things we used to go to where a lot of people would congregate in an area and have fun uh, and win these like little siren whistles, right? So I'm getting close to the end here. So I'm having uh, to move from uh, this vibe that we're going to more of the, you know, six, eight feel. You're going to have to get it back into the um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa kind of vibe. It's all in three, but the groove is subdivided in three different ways. Let's get into here. <laughs> That's this might be my second favorite part of this whole thing after the the hey shout. 
Um, just the way that this groove kind of goes through the dun 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 It might be a little um, Leonard Bernstein um, America uh, from West Side Story. That kind of just like you know we're gonna we're gonna move around the uh, time signatures, but but it's you're trying to do it in a really lyrical way, right? A way that you know it's it would be easy to sing along to. It actually didn't it didn't feel right until uh, I spent some time trying to make the to make the accents work I like that part some big oompas I just wanted to go like you know go big or go home idea these are just as wanted to back up all of the thing that's that's happening over here I mean it's music to battle by and knowing it was going down breaking down to this other section uh down here that's a little again a little bit more intimate i i knew that i wanted to make just something kind of comically large so when it breaks down it's like oh well you know what was all that about then so this part is another bavarian swiss like dance idea a lot of times when they're dancing the dancers will kind of stomp on the floor so i got these stomps and claps down here Right, uh, of course the tube is doing its part here. So one of the problems I have when doing this is trying to balance the tuba with some of the low strings sometimes. They, they tend to obscure each other and, and the tuba doesn't tuba doesn't put out a whole lot of sound. I mean, unless they're, they're really blaring. And a lot of times it's just doing these little puffs, the boom, boom. This has got just an excellent full sound. Uh, this is the Symphobia. You know, kind of just as a whole section. So as I'm using these. Oh, guys, we get it. It was a big battle, you know, to make sure that the tube was being as powerful as it needed to be to punch through. So I was using some of the lower brass in here too. Um, and I actually wound up using a different tuba for a lot of the other caramel stuff that was kind of more in the traditional vibe. This is the front porch tuba from front porch band, I guess. <laughs> really that nice puffy sound that i just want to mention that i, I bought that for uh for caramel uh so that's pretty much it for this tra oh what's over here nothing good i can assure you the idea graveyard and there's a reason that this stuff is over here and this is abandoned this stuff is just junk uh, but this stuff over here was actually some ideas. This was a piece that I had written in there and then decided, ah, it doesn't really fit there. Maybe I'll put it in later. I moved it to the end and then never use it again. There's me trying to make that work. Yeah, I know why I did that. This stuff over here is, is not even worth listening to. Why did you show it to us? Man? If I'm directionless, I'll just throw some things down and see kind of what takes off. Uh, so that brings us to the end of that. I hope that was uh, interesting and informative, and I hope this doesn't take uh, two months for me to process to get it out to you. Uh, a little bit ago, I updated the Pirate 101 uh, musical tour of the Spiral. Hopefully, that uh, you can check that out. I'm also doing some more with the Vex retrospective. If you're, you happen to be a fan of the Vex soundtrack from a long time ago, go check out Respond Records, and uh, they have it on vinyl. All right, guys. Hopefully, talk to you soon.